you very much. I was extremely honoured when Alison asked me if I would speak at the launch of um, this amazing uh, book that I hope you will all um, uh, buy. Um, and I must also say um, a great um, thanks, as uh, Fergus has done, uh, to WONAC, because it was uh, largely as a result of a, a generous bequest uh, to WONAC that this uh, book um, was possible. Originally, it was just going to be a history of, of WONAC, but uh, it grew into a lot more than that, as its subtitle um, says, The Abortion Rights Struggle in, um, in New Zealand. Who better to write a feminist, pro-choice history of this um, struggle than Alison? She is an acclaimed prize-winning journalist, a Pulitzer Prize, no less, and an editor with only twi with over 20 years experience, both in New Zealand and in America. So she brings both a local and an international perspective. In 1990, she joined the new Rainbow Warrior on its trip to Mururoa, sending her reports to the Dominion and the New Zealand Listener. She has a BA in political history from Victoria University and a PhD, I mean a real PhD <laughs> in philosophy, um, from Denver and New York. In 1999, her team at the Denver Post won the Pulitzer Prize in journalism for their coverage of the Columbine High School Massacre. Her writing style is that of a reporter from the battle lines, but she is generous in acknowledging the work of others, and when it helps to make a point, she quotes directly from other writers. If she has one fault, it is that she is incurably modest. Her research for this book has been meticulous and well documented in the copious end notes. She has delved into boxes in libraries, waded through court reports and Hansard, interviewed 17 participants, and in the process, recovered and uncovered much information, some of which was new to me and I'm sure will be new to readers. She has brought back into focus a number of newspaper articles that made an impact at the time and we do forget, and I am grateful to be reminded about them. For example, on page 68, the open letter from James K. Baxter to the Catholic Church, which is a gem. She has divided the book into two parts. The first and larger part is devoted to the struggles of the 70s, which Di has already um, mentioned. But the chapter that I particularly appreciated was chapter 8 on the report, the Royal Commission report, exposing the many flaws and weaknesses of the Royal Commission report. So often it is regarded as an authoritative document and is still referred to in court cases, but in Alison's words on page 153, the Commission's report was filled with internal inconsistencies, logical errors, unfounded assumptions, and arguably biased consideration of evidence. Her critique is perceptive and incisive. The second part of her book deals with the 80s and beyond up to the present day. Alison analyzes why we ended up with such a bad law and argues that it's not good enough to leave things alone just because women can get abortions. The only reason they can get abortions is because the certifying consultants currently are able to give the law a liberal interpretation. But, as she says on page 274, the current situation is tenuous at best, enshrined in no law, championed by no political party, 
and currently under siege. That's the end of the quote. What we need is a way to maintain those good, safe medical services in an environment that respects women's autonomy. Taking abortion out of the Crimes Act would be a very good start. In the last few decades, there have been many changes in society and many shifts in attitude. <coughs> this book will make you angry, but it will also make you reflect on your own values. It certainly made me question mine. In the 70s, I felt more comfortable with the more moderate stance of Al Rand's, with its emphasis on safety and access, what Alison refers to as the conservative medico-humanitarian <laughs> approach, <laughs> as opposed to the more radical feminist right-to-choose approach of Wonak. But over the years, I have changed, and so has Al Rand's, appreciating the need for greater emphasis on women's rights. I look forward to the new leadership in Al Rand's, headed by our new president, Morgan Healy, spearheading further changes. One of the great strengths of Alison's book is that she has been involved in both Wonak and Al Rand's and understands only too well the common ground as well as the differences between the two approaches and how in the future both must be utilised for the benefit of women. Understanding our history is essential as we contemplate the future. My dream for the future is much more ambitious than Alison's, her dream is in the book. <laughs> I dream of a time in the future when people have, a much, have much better methods of contraception to prevent unplanned pregnancies in the first place, and when these occur, as they always will, there will be safe, reliable, and private methods of abortion, making the politicians, lawyers, and doctors largely irrelevant. <laughs> However, that's a dream. Until then, we will need to be resourceful, and this book will help us to avoid some of the mistakes of the past. It is a must read for anyone interested in women's issues and reproductive rights. It will be referred to by many people in the years ahead. Thank you, Alison, for providing us with such a useful resource. And I hereby launch this book. Thank you.